All right. Happy Friday to all. Hello, Sherm family. Welcome to another edition of the Workplace Tech Spotlight. I'm Guillermo Correa, Managing Director of Sherm Labs, Sherm's Workplace Innovation Lab. I'm your host for this series where we shine a spotlight on some of the most interesting future of work topics, innovators, and disruptive technologies. By the way, thanks for everyone for joining because um, we've been seeing a dramatic increase and the number of people that are attending from all over the world. So we welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, before we get started, just a couple of uh, quick announcements uh, for sure members, in case that you're not aware, the Workplace Tech community is live. This is the trip advisor for HR Tech. Um, the WTC has a list of new innovative technologies for your workplace. So please visit workplacetechcommunity.sherm.org. It's completely free and available to all SHRM members. Also, for those of you watching on LinkedIn or other social media platforms, please share this live stream and tag SHRM. You can also use the hashtags SHRM Labs as well as Workplace Tech. Um, so let's get to, to today's topic, right? So prior to the, to the COVID-19 pandemic, US businesses were experiencing one of the tightest talent markets in history with many organizations struggling to find and retain the employees they needed to succeed. Now that the COVID-19 pandemic has essentially subsided, right? Organizations are still confronting a mismatch between the talent they need in a new economy and what they're finding in the, in the marketplace. One of the most effective and least utilized solutions to these gaps are untapped talent pools. Those workers who may not be in the standard consideration set when businesses seek talent, due to perceived barriers related to one or more demographic characteristics. Untapped talent pools such as disabled workers present unique opportunities and value to organizations willing to make the effort to seek them out. For workers with disabilities, one of the most frequently cited points of resistance is the uncertainty around what kind of accommodations will be necessary and how much they will cost. However, Research from the Office of Disability Employment Policy has confirmed that the vast majority of accommodations cost nothing and only require a bit of flexibility or creativity. Of the accommodations that do have cost attached, most are one-time expenses of $500 or less. Now here, let me repeat that again. Of the accommodations that do have cost attached, most are one-time expenses of $500 or less. So the cost of providing accommodations to disabled workers is one of the biggest misconceptions in the workplace. So joining us to talk about this topic today is Sarah Bernard, COO and co-founder of Inclusively. There, Sarah, thanks so much for uh, joining us and for being here. Welcome to the stage. Um, before we get talking about this, uh, this topic, uh, maybe you can tell the audience a little bit about yourself as well as um, in Inclusively. Yeah, thank you so much, Guillermo, for having me and to Sherm for hosting this. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Inclusively, and Inclusively offers senior HR leaders an all-in-one solution. We fill the gap that's left by the absence of real-time personalization platforms, enabling businesses to really attract top, diverse talent, and then also ensuring that every employee really feels valued and accommodated in real time every day. We were originally founded as an employment platform for people with disabilities a little over four years ago with partnerships with companies like Microsoft, Delta Airlines, Salesforce, Charles Schwab. And since then, we've built this tech framework that allows both job seekers and employees to learn about and self-select accommodations, which we actually call success enablers and inclusively, that help them really thrive in the workplace. We have over 60,000 active job seekers on our platform today. Over 30% of our team at Inclusively self-identifies with a disability. And, and then we work with over 50 Fortune 500 companies, really helping them address the ever-evolving employee demands in a really scalable way. Okay, fantastic. So let, let's get right to it because we have a, sh a short amount of time here available. Um, so how is it that the accommodations landscape um, has changed, especially with the current market? Yes, yeah, so 30% of the existing workforce meets the federal defi definition of having a disability, yet only 3% disclose that today, which means there's 27% of your workforce that may not be set up for success. And people, they traditionally, they don't disclose because the accommodations team is 
is mostly seen as this very reactive compliance function at companies. And people fear that they have more to lose than gain by disclosing, and there's really no reason to do it. But companies, they're, they'll have to address this regardless. We hear about this pressure that's really hitting clients, and that's because there's millennials and Gen Z. Well, these are two generations that they've been accommodated throughout their school age years, and they're demanding the same as they're entering the workplace. And these two generations, they'll make up two thirds of the workforce by 2030. So companies are getting hit with these demands and they really don't have this framework of dealing with it. Um, there's also 50% of people that are leaving their jobs because their needs aren't being met and accommodating your employees is what a great way to reduce churn and boost retention. Um, and you had mentioned, you know, the cost of accommodations. It's one of the biggest misconceptions that it's very expensive to accommodate. And it is a nominal investment compared to the benefit that these accommodations can bring to your employees and as a way to bring in more diverse talent from untapped talent pools, like the largest one, which is those with disabilities. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the, I, I think that this speaks directly to, uh, it, well, it's clearly, you know, you know, a topic that's related to uh, DEI, right? diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, you know, in past discussions that I've had around DEI, I've, uh, you know, I, I've mentioned this many, many times where I say, you know what, For, forget, forget about it being the right thing to do, right? I mean, it's been clearly proven now and, and McKinsey has some great information out there that, that shows that, you know, organizations that are more diverse actually perform financially better than those that aren't. I mean, that 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 is a, a fact now. So once again, you know, forget about DEI being the right thing to do. From a financial perspective, it's absolutely something that your organization should be doing to have better financial results. You know, um, absolutely. Yeah. So um, so how how uh, you know maybe you can talk a little bit about. Um, you know the 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 accommodation requests that um you know that companies are getting now right um especially when you know this, the, i think it's very important what you what you mentioned around uh, gen z and millennials right i mean they grew up with with you know having all these resources or or you know ways to make i, I don't know if, if it's the right way of saying make their lives easier right it, it, you know whether it was in school or you know or or, or whatever right um, but what are some of the accommodation requests that, that uh, you know, how is it that, that that's changing? Yes, we're seeing this major shift in the HR landscape um, with two significant scenarios really unfolding. First, people, they got used to working at home um, during the pandemic. Their cadences, rates, the ability to be heads down on projects that required a lot of cognitive attention. And in some cases, working from home also made childcare a lot easier for people. Although I think a lot of people are open to returning to the office and understand the benefits that being in office can have. They want to bring some of these things to the workplace with them. And they became better at their jobs and felt more fulfilled as a result of them. And they're not ready to give those up. So back to office mandates, they're contributing to this massive increase in the volume of accommodations requests that are then hitting and putting tremendous pressure on accommodations teams. And companies are, they're struggling on like, how do you manage this? Um, the accommodations successfully teams, they're overworked, they don't have the framework to do it. And they're dealing with these types of requests that feels like it's like a wave that's all crashing at once. And I'll share two examples. We had um, one very large financial institution um, here in, in the US that their accommodations team alone, it jumped from two to five people in just one year. And then we had another large enterprise that we work with who um, their CEO announced the back to office or back to you know home office mandate. And um, that month they saw a hundred percent increase in the in accommodations requests. And most of these requests, they're they're coming from, they're not tied to really the physical environment. They're more support that is needed around mental health. Um, which is very different, I think, than the number of requests that they're used to managing. Um, so I think companies, they thought they could hit this, press this button and return to how things were before the pandemic, but they're realizing that that's not an option and employers are coming back to work and they're doing so with a whole new set of expectations and set of needs. Interesting. And and what, what would you say are some of the top uh, accomm accommodation requests that uh, that you guys are seeing? Yeah, typically it's, you know, things come accommodations that don't cost anything. It's 
remote work or flexible schedules, extra time to complete tasks, periodic rest breaks is in there, job coaching and mentorship are a lot of accommodations from the, the candidates on our platform. Um, information ahead of time, um, that is especially important, you know, interviewing, especially for those with autism, um, uninterrupted work time, you know, monitors, ergonomic chairs, things like that. Got it. Okay. And, 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 and you know, and uh, based on that list, you know, it seemed like a lot of them um, were related to uh, to mental health issues, like you were saying just, just a second ago. So, um, so why are um, accommodations in the workplace important for HR to build um, an inclusive and engaged uh, workforce? Yes, I. Um, so HR leaders, they they need to understand that building an inclusive and supportive work environment that's key to attracting and retaining talent, especially for the younger workers that we talked about. It's also key to getting the most out of your current employees. Um, companies, they really they have to transform their accommodations team to be led from more of a social model than that you know legal compliance model that exists today to have this far superior employee experience. And if they're able to do that, they're going to be able to better attract diverse talent, especially from those from the disability community, meet the needs of the younger generations. Um, and I think a lot of HR leaders, they worry or you know, senior executives, CEOs, they're worried that if they make accommodations widely available, that they'll get like this massive increase. But it's happening anyway. <laughs> um, and if you build transparency around how you support your employees, arm both the employer and the employee with education and a scalable framework to bring these two sites together. It's going to ensure better footing for long term relationships to be built between employee and employer um, with and even without disabilities. Fantastic. Um, uh, we have a, a short amount of time left. Um, are there any resources that uh, that you can, uh, you know, maybe you can share with our audience um, that might be able to give them some further information or, or help them in, in this regard? Yeah, all of this is exactly what um, the vision of Inclusively is here to help you help organizations with. Um, so if you go to our website, it's www.inclusively.com. Um, if you go to the employers page, there's a lot of information about how we work with employers. If you're a job seeker tuning in today, um, sign up and use Inclusively for free. Okay, fantastic. By the way, also for our audience out there, um, for sure members, we have um, a report that was put out. Uh, it was a, a collaboration between the Sherm Foundation and Walmart, um, and, and it's a report that's titled um, beneath the surface, and and it also uh, provides some great information on on a uh, um, you know on the topic that that we've been discussing here today. Well, um, hey, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for for today. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, a great and needed um, discussion, I think. Um, and uh, for our audience out there, you know, we hope uh, you all enjoyed it as well. Um, if you'd like more information about Inclusively, please visit them at inclusively.com. Thank you all for tuning, tuning into the Sherm Labs Workplace Tech Spotlight. Once again, if you enjoy this live stream, please share it using the hashtags Sherm Labs, Workplace Tech, and Sherm, and visit us at shermlabs.com to stay up to date. See you next time. Thank you very much.